in the pulpit. It's really exciting. <laughs> Make the last day a good one. So um, as we were, as the worship planning team was prayerfully discussing the focus of October as really focused on Latinx and Hispanic peoples, I thought it would be important to lift up the voices of Latinas. There is a whole theology dedicated to Hispanic women, much like we have black theology or queer theology. This theology is called Mujerista. Say that with me. Mujerista. Mujerista theology. I felt called to share my study from the seminary of Mujerista theology with the worship planning team because it only felt right that if we're going to lift up Hispanic peoples and communities and traditions, that we should do so in a way that helps us experience it to the best of our ability. So Pastor Sally asked me to share a little bit about Mujerista theology since our service today in many ways harkens back to similar themes. So I'll read a couple of excerpts from this book, Mujerista Theology, by Ada Maria Asazi Diaz, who is more or less the primary theologian on the topic. But first, uh, let me provide a little summary of her points about the goals of Mujerista Theology. First, Mujerista Theology is to provide a platform for Latina women to give them a voice. Second, to develop a theological framework that takes seriously the experiences and practices of Hispanic women. And thirdly, to challenge the theological understandings and church teachings that have oppressed Latinas and can therefore not be correct. Because if any church teaching or theology is oppressive, it inherently cannot be the truth of God. So Mujerista theology is a theology from the perspective of Latinas. It is not exclusively for Latinas. It is meant to provide liberation as Hispanic women come to know and participate in a different theological and therefore hopefully social reality. The hope is for radical change that eliminates the oppression of Latinas. The way to do this, Isazi Diaz writes, is to provide a theological discourse in which Latinas can hear themselves and express their concerns. To illustrate this, she quotes a young Latina student who wrote this in a paper for her when she was a professor at um, Drew Theological. The student writes, Something about feminist theory always made me uncomfortable. I did not stand for the oppression of women, but I knew that I also did not stand for the oppression of the Latino community. In this class, I am encountering the Mujerista perspective for the first time. This perspective offers me a viewpoint that has been created taking into consideration my understandings, those of a Puerto Rican daughter. To acknowledge this term, mujerista, is very important. It allows us Latinas to construct something in our own terms, not in the shadow cast by the Anglo. I have always believed that in a struggle, we must always define our structures and not simply accept where we are placed in the existing ones. On a similar note, one of the key characteristics of Mujerista theology that I would be remiss not to share is called Lo Cotidiano. Again, she writes, When in Mujerista theology we talk about the liberative daily experience, about Hispanic women's experience of struggling every day, we are referring to lo quotidiano. Lo quotidiano has to do with particular forms of speech, the experience of class and gender distinctions, the impact of work and poverty on routines and expectations, relations within families and among friends and neighbors in the community, the experience of authority and central expressions of faith, such as prayer, 
religious celebrations and conceptions of key religious figures. Lo Quotidiano points to shared experiences. It is not a metaphysical category, it does not exist up here, but deals with the everyday stuff of life. Mujerista theology uses the daily lived experience of Hispanic women as the source, the foundation, the roots of the theology. Mujerista theology does not instruct the lives of Hispanic women, but rather the lives of Hispanic women inform and create the theology. So today, we'll hear all kinds of references to being the other, being a stranger in a strange land, themes of solidarity and empowerment. These are all a part of Mujerista theology. And it is my hope that you will learn and take in this theology through our worship celebration today and go out and learn more, both about the Hispanic communities, the struggles of Latino women, and Mujerista theology. Let us worship the God of all peoples. Our scripture reading today comes from Exodus chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. That can be found on page 64 or 79 of the Old Testament. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages. As the Lord commanded, they camped at Bethlehem, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained about Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt? to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst. So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rocks at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it, so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massah and Moravia, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? A word of God for the people of God.
lost in the wilderness. What is it that you need? Support. Guidance. Guidance. Directions. Directions. GPS. <laughs> Hope. Faith. Stubbornness. <laughs> Understanding, did I hear? Horses. Connections. A good memory to find your way back. Uh -huh. A good memory to remember how you were rescued before. When we're lost in the wilderness. Sometimes it's hard to remember that, isn't it? Sometimes it's hard to remember that we got out of this before, right? In, in this time, in this short window of time since sometime in August, we have experienced devastation with hurricane after hurricane after hurricane and earthquake. It has been overwhelming, especially for those who have been caught in the middle of it. These hurricanes and this earthquake have affected people in the southern part of the United States and in Mexico and in the Caribbean. People who we are focusing on in particular during this window of time. The United Church of Christ Disaster Ministries responds to these crises, one after another. And we have asked you to support the United Church of Christ Disaster Ministries, one after another. And I know that one of the terms that gets thrown around a lot at a time like this, when we've had disaster after disaster after disaster is this notion about donor fatigue. I don't buy it. It's not okay. It's not acceptable for us to cop to that. That's an excuse. That does not mean that every one of us can write a check every time we turn around or put money in the basket every time we turn around. It does mean that each of us is called to pay attention to what is right for us each time. No one is asking.